All right, there's my musical introduction. All right, part four uh, of this. I'm in my office again, so no guitar. All right, so this time what we're going to look at is piecewise functions and the continuity of a piecewise function. And what we're going to try to do is look at um, a piecewise function. I've given you some sort of a value where there's a potential for there to be a discontinuity. All right, so we're going to try on this piecewise function, figure out where it's discontinuous, where it's continuous. So here's the way I do this. First of all, that is a line. And since that's linear, that will be continuous everywhere on this interval. Okay, so you're without a doubt on this problem. You can be guaranteed that this is continuous from, from 1 to infinity because it's a line. Okay, same thing with this. This is still linear. That's y equals mx plus b. It's linear. So again, we know when x is greater than or equal to 1 that we have to be continuous. All right, the only question is, well, what's going on at 1? So this is what you want to do. Okay, and you don't have to graph. Okay, what you do is you just say, okay, x is 1. Plug it in to the first piece. The first piece is 1 plus x. Plug it in, you get 1 plus 1, so you get 2. Even though that doesn't say greater than or equal to, still plug it in because we want to see if these connect. Okay, then do this. x equals 1. Plug into your function. Okay, so now we've got 5 minus 1. So that's equal to 4. Okay, so what that means is you are discontinuous at 1 because they don't connect. Okay, they're different. So these, these two graphs are not going to connect to make it continuous. Okay, so what we would say is discontinuous at x equals 1. And since these are linear functions, that means it has to be continuous everywhere else. No, no breaks on lines. Okay, so then we would just say negative infinity to 1, use a parenthesis because you're discontinuous at 1, and then union 1 to infinity like that. Okay, so again, notice what I'm trying to do is try to do this as independently of graphing as I possibly can. Now, I'm going to do a, a graphing calculator here in just a second. Okay, so I want to show you how you can verify this too, and it's kind of good to do this at least on a couple of problems. So the way you put a piecewise function is, we're going to do parentheses 1 plus x, and then the condition, uh, you want to use a division symbol as your separator, then you new parentheses, and then put in the condition. And you'll see this angle button right here, so you go second apps, and whoop, 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 that's not right, test, I'm sorry, second test, second test, test is where you find that, that's the key thing. And then this is greater than, so that's option three, greater than one, close that off. Now what that's going to do, see, notice if I graph, oh, come on, let's get a standard window here, it only does the graph of that linear function, one plus x, from one to infinity. So by, you control the part of the line that's graphed, all right? And what we do is proceed this way. So we go y2 is 5 minus x. Again, that's a linear function. Close parentheses, division, x, test, and this one is greater than or equal to, so that's option four. So, ah, I put the wrong, uh, I think I have put the wrong thing in my notes here. I think what I intended was for this to be less than or equal to one. Okay, I didn't even catch that. So this, let's make that um, less than or equal to 1. Okay, so that was the intention on that. So one thing that you might do on that is change this to uh, x less than or equal to 1. All right, so uh, I'll put this over the side so you can refer to this if you need to. And, and you want to make sure that you know how to do this. Oh, come on, what's it doing there? Okay, let me slide it way over here. Maybe it's better. Okay, so we do a standard window. So that's what that looks like. And, and to me, the graph's now pretty clear. You can pretty well tell why that would be discontinuous because there's that break in the graph like that. So the graphing calculator should make everything clear to you when you do this. Okay. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at a, the same function, but we're going to look at a different point. 
Okay, so again, what you would do with uh, with this then is, hey, this is at two. So the thing is, this is we're going to uh, change this piecewise function a little bit here on the calculator, and uh, we'll do the same thing. So again, you, the thought process is, this is linear, so we're guaranteed that when you're less than or equal to two, you're continuous. That's a guarantee. And then here, that's also a line, so you're guaranteed to be continuous when you're greater than two. The only thing in question is this, the piecewise function. I'm, when I graph this, I'm just going to need to change these two things right here. So again, what I do is this. I look at x equals two. I plug into the top function. Okay, that's one plus two is equal to three. And then I have x equals 2 again. I plug in to 5 minus x. So this time I get 5 minus 2, I get 3. So what do you think that means? They're both 3? Well, that means they're going to connect at that point then. So this means that uh, they do connect. So that would mean that this function would be continuous everywhere. We already know it's continuous because it's two linear functions. The only question is, does it connect? Last problem didn't connect. This one does. So we're going to find that we're discontinuous nowhere. So that means we must be continuous for all real numbers. Okay, so that's how that basically gets put together then, say. Okay. All right, so let's see. We can just kind of use the calculator to check. So I'm going to do this. You can do this if you want to. I'm just going to change this slightly. And let's change this first one to the first one was less than or equal uh, less than or equal to 2, so I'm just going to go over the, or 2, and then the next one was greater than 2, so i just put this in, second test, uh, greater than 2, okay, so I want to get that put in, and then let's take a look and see if the graphing calculator verifies what we saw, look at that, it's connected, Okay, and that's the key thing. You can tell it's connected, so it is continuous. Okay, verification. Okay, the next one uh, kind of goes like this. And um, I'm going to kind of talk about this in just a minute here. Okay, so the way I look at this again is the first thing. When you're doing a piecewise function and looking at the continuity, think about what is, what these are. Those are all linear, really. I mean, this is... Uh, y equals negative x, that's linear. So just that right there tells you that when x is less than zero, you're continuous. You have to be, because that's a line. Now, this is a dot. This right here just means you have a point zero, 01. That's a dot. That's a point on the function. That's not an interval. And then this one is also linear. So it'll go like this. Okay, that'll be continuous also. So the only thing we really got to worry about is what's going on at zero? Do these... Uh, two graphs connect, and is that point where they connect? So that's what we got to worry about there. Um, now, I'll go ahead and I'll show you on the graphing calculator how this is, but before I do that, let's just figure this out ourselves. You know, really what we do is we look at x equals 0. We plug in to y equals um, negative x, so we get y is 0. Okay, we're going to take the second one. Again, x is 0 is the point we're interested in, so we plug into y equals x, again, y is equal to zero. So they connect, okay? However, you got to be careful. They connect, however, this is a point, zero, one, okay? And what you got to notice is this point does not connect with that line then. So that means it's got to be discontinuous. So we are discontinuous at x equals zero for that reason. And if we write the interval, it'll go like this. We'll be continuous from negative infinity to zero, and then from zero to infinity. Okay, so that's how you get that put together again. Now, you can actually put this in your graphing calculator this way. Okay, so if you want to do this with me, you can, or you can just kind of watch what I do here. The, uh, I'll just clear this stuff off. The first function is negative x. You don't have to put that in parentheses because it's just a monomial. It's got one term. Then we say parentheses, x less than zero. Okay, so I'll go option five, zero, like that. Okay, and then we just put one in. 
like that, and I think this works. I haven't done this a long time. I guess we'll find out. Then you put X test, and there's an equal to. So X equals 1, like that. And then the last one is Y equals X, and the condition is X is greater than 0. Okay, that's how that goes. Now let's see what we get. Okay. Now you can't see that little point. That's what I couldn't remember on this, so I guess you can't see that point. But but what you can see on here is the graphs do connect the way we thought they would, but you just don't see that point um, zero, 01. So actually this graph looks like this. There's the point zero, 01, there's a, a kind of a hole or a bubble there, so you can tell it's disconnect, it's discontinuous. That's a removable discontinuity there. And I don't know if you zoomed, like if you changed your window to like negative one to one, if that dot will show or not. I'm just sort of curious. It might, but it, it, but you have to know it's there. Okay, so let me just zoom in on that real quick. Yeah, I still don't see the dot, but it's there. Okay, what will happen on this, if you look at your table of values, um, you'll kind of see that point, and I think I got that on there okay. When x is 0, it should be 1. I may have put that in wrong or something. Let me double check. Yeah, I did. That should be x equals 0. Okay, that's why the dot's not showing up. Okay, so it needs to go like this. Just need to type over that. Now let's see if it shows up. Yeah, it still doesn't, but it's there. <laughs> okay, all right. <clears throat> I wasn't sure if that would show up or not. So anyway, that's the way that goes then. Okay, so that's how you would figure that out. Okay, so what I want you to do is I'll have you go ahead and pause the video and do these three problems and do them without your calculator. And you can use your calculator to verify if you want to. Now, let's see, I think I had something on here that I intended to be a little bit different. Let me see if I remember what this was. Um, yeah, hold on. I'm going to pause just for a second. Yeah, I, there was something I thought that I had had. This was not intentional. This third one should be X less than 2 and x greater than 2. And that's not a mistake. What I want you to see is the slight difference between these two problems. This is less than or equal to x greater. This is less than and greater. There was a slight difference between the two. So uh, now you can pause, come back, and then you can see if you reasoned it out the way. Hopefully your teacher reasons it out, okay? Okay, so if you want to look and see how you did, uh, let's see, this one... Number one, um, what happened is you just, the thing is it's quadratic. That means that's continuous when you're less than, than one. It has to be, right? And then this is linear, so when you're greater than one, you have to be continuous. The only thing in question is the one, so we're just seeing, does the piecewise function, the two pieces connect or do they not connect? So if x is one, plug it into x squared, one squared is one. Plug the 1 into 2x, 2 times 1 is 2. So since they're different, they don't connect. So therefore, it would be discontinuous. Okay, that would be the result that I'd want you to get. Discontinuous at 1, continuous everywhere else. Here's the graph I think I put in right here. You can clearly see the break. Okay, so you can tell, uh, like the left hand, the right hand limit goes to 2, the left hand limit goes to 1. They don't connect clearly. Okay, uh, this one would be, we're just changing this at 2. So again, the only thing to question is the 2. If you do 2 squared, you get 4. 2 times 2, you get 4. So that means they do connect. So it's not discontinuous anywhere. It's continuous everywhere else because you have a quadratic and a linear function, which are continuous everywhere. Hard to tell on the graph. The graphing calculator almost looks like there's a hole there, but there isn't. That's why you got to really clearly understand these things. Those things do connect, okay? And, you know, the math doesn't lie to you on that. Sometimes the calculator or graphing calculator is a little deceiving, okay? 
So the next one, the only difference is, uh, well, obviously they they have the same value, but there's a bubble there. So you don't have an equal to bar there. So it's discontinuous. So actually the way the graph of number three would look like is there would be a bubble there. That's really the difference between problem two and problem three. No bubble on two, so it's continuous. Bubble on three, so it's discontinuous. Okay, so that's how number number three's graph would look like is like that. Okay, so hopefully again, you're kind of you can reason most of these things out without having to look at the calculator, but the calculator should make things hopefully crystal clear to you. Okay. All right, so if I move the next thing, um, what I don't want to do on the next thing here is just do some graphs. I'll do a couple of examples, kind of show you what we're leading to here, and then let you try to do a couple of these. So the idea uh, with this is, is we want to just do, you know, basic, basic graphs here. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm giving you a, a set of conditions and you're trying to reason out what the graph might look like. Now, on these problems, what you come up with, the answers may vary. Okay, so um, what I do, like if I'm grading something like this, I just look at your graph and I say, okay, is it a function, number one, and do all these conditions hold? Okay, so what I'm going to do is just kind of look at these conditions here, uh, and we're going to make a graph that follows these three conditions. Okay, so to begin with, the first thing I gave you was f of zero equals five. So you have to know, well, what does that mean? That means you have a point on the graph. So you have a point zero five. So that means that really all you got to do, and you have to do this, is you put a dot at zero five. So that's guaranteed. Okay, easy. That's the easiest part of the problem. Okay, Statement number two says that you have a limit as x goes to five, and it's a two-sided limit. Let's go into two. So something's going on in this graph at five. So what I'm going to do is show that, go over to five, and I'm just going to think, well, what would a graph look like if the two-sided limit was going to two? Okay, well, one, there's, and there's more than one possibility on this. One possibility on this would be that, you know, the graph just kind of comes together like that. Okay, there might be a bubble there. There might not be a bubble there. Okay, so that would be a possibility is right now I'm showing that the limit as x goes to 5 is 2. Okay, so that takes care of that. Um, <clears throat> next thing I got is limit x goes to negative infinity the graph is going to negative infinity, okay? And all that means is this, okay? If the graph goes forever to the left, what does the graph do? The graph goes down. So that statement says, as x gets smaller, y gets smaller. So I'm just going to have something like that. I know that's going to happen, okay? So that's good. And then the next thing we have is the fourth condition <coughs> is the limit x goes to infinity, of f of x, that also goes to infinity. All right, so I heard what that means. x gets bigger, y gets bigger. So that means you could just make that graph go like that. <coughs> Excuse me, okay? Now, what you do from here is up to you. You can even be clever and creative in how you do this, all right? You know, as long as it's a function, then you got it. So what I'm kind of looking for on this problem is I'm seeing, okay, did you get f of zero is five? Yeah, you did. Uh, did you get that the limit of x approaches 5 is 2? Yeah, there's more than one way to do that. But, you know, as long as you have one way of doing that, that's fine. Do you have the limit as x goes to negative infinity being negative infinity? Yeah. And the x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity. So those are the key parts that I'm looking for. And again, answers vary. No two students are going to come up with precisely the same graph. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Next one, I'll put a let's put a picture on this one, then we'll just approach this one the same way. And sometimes it takes you have to think about it a little bit more. The first statement on this one is you're undefined. So when x is three, you know there's several possibilities. You could have a bubble. You might even have an asymptote. So I'm not going to put anything there yet. 
I'm right now I'm just okay, I know I'm undefined at x equals three, so I'm just kind of writing a note to myself. Okay. So we'll figure that out a little later how we're going to do that. Um, so that will take care of that for now. And then the next statement is a limit. So let's see if what we can figure out from here. So this is saying the limit as x goes to 3 of f of x is equal to 5. So what that's saying then is, okay, we have a two-sided limit coming to 5. And this will kind of help me figure out what's going on the fact that you're undefined at three. So think about that. If the limit is approaching five and it's a two-sided limit and you're coming together, then it makes a lot of sense now that you'd probably have a bubble there and then you would have that part of your graph coming together like that. So right now I've actually established both conditions. I'm undefined and that limit as X goes to three is approaching five. So that's good, right? Then we get into the next thing which is this, so we have the limit, x approaches 10 from the left, of f of x is negative infinity. Okay, so we're gonna move way out here to 10. All right, well, I want you to think about that. If the graph is going to negative infinity from the left-hand side, what's probably happening at 10? There's probably an asymptote, right? Probably, okay? Even though I didn't say there's one. Well, actually, I say it here, don't I, at the very end. So it looks like what we need to do here is just do this, okay? We just need to make the graph go to negative infinity when you're on the left-hand side of uh, 10. And then the next statement is saying that you have the limit as x goes to 10 from the right-hand side equals infinity. So that kind of goes along with what we know about an asymptote, so that's going to do something like that. Now the rest of it's up to you, okay? The rest of the graph, I don't care what you do, okay? You can make that go that way if you want. You can make this connect. You can make this wiggle and do whatever you want, okay? But what I'm looking at is, um, number one, that you're undefined. At, G of 3 is undefined. The limit as x goes to 3 is 5, so that we got that. The limit from the left-hand side of 10 is negative infinity. We got that. Right-hand limit at 10 is infinity. And then we're undefined, so we have an asymptote. So see, that would be one possible graph that you could come up with. <clears throat> okay, so go ahead and pause your video here, and let's go ahead and see what you come up with on these. Okay, so let's see. Here's what I came up with. And again, there's variations in how your graphs can go. And this would be how I would check this. This is what I would do. So first thing I do on this graph is, this is saying f of negative 5 is negative 4. Okay, so that just says if x is negative 5, y is negative 4. You have a dot. Okay, that's a check. We got that right. f of 0 is undefined. Now, there's more than one way to do that. You could have an asymptote. If you had a vertical asymptote, that's okay. Uh... And with this one, I just said, okay, I'm going to put a bubble there. All right, so I did that. So I got that right. That's one possibility. The next thing says is the two-sided limit as x goes to negative 5 is 0. So your graph has to do this. Okay, it has to, in that little region there, the left and right-hand limit have to come together to give 0. So you have to have something like that to get that right. And then the next thing is, this is saying the limit is x goes infinitely left, x goes to negative infinity, graph goes to infinity. So that's good. Okay. And then last, as x goes to infinity, this way, the uh, limit goes to infinity. So you got to kind of have this point. This part's got to look something like that. Uh, you got to show that part, of the, that end point of the graph, and that like that, and some, somehow you're undefined right there. All right, so there's different ways. This would just be one way. I just I kind of have to look at individual papers uh, to know for sure if you're right, but you know, you can check it yourself. If all of these conditions are met on your graph and your graph's a function, then you're right. Okay. And let's see, the next one, what I did is I made myself undefined at negative four, so I did an asymptote, which you'll pretty well have to have an asymptote on this one. 
the reason I know there's an asymptote is because the left-hand limit at negative 4 goes to infinity. Anytime you're going to infinity on the left-hand side of something, you probably got an asymptote. The right-hand limits also go into infinity. So basically, you want to have asymptote here, left and right-hand limit around that asymptote go into to infinity. All right, so I kind of look at right now, okay, we got this okay, we got that okay, we got that okay. Then f of 2 is undefined. Now, this is up to you. You, just, you can either have a bubble you might have, you could have a little solid dot there if you want to do. I don't care. You just got to show that it's undefined. You could have an asymptote. So if you have an asymptote there, that's fine. Anytime you have a vertical asymptote, though, remember the graph has to go to infinity or negative infinity. Okay, so we got that okay. And then last we have, as x goes to infinity, y goes down. So you would have to have this little endpoint of the graph like that. Okay. Those are exercises that are seeing how well you understand the language and how functions behave. Okay, so I'll go to this uh, next thing here, and we're going to talk just briefly about left and right continuity, and then this will be the end of this part of the video. So we're just going to do this kind of briefly. So basically what we say is a function is said to be continuous from the right if the right-hand limit is equal to the function value. Okay, and then we say the function's continuous from the left if the left-hand limit is equal to the value of the function at that particular point. So if we look at this, this is kind of how this goes. All right, so for instance, this right here, we have a function, we have a break, we're discontinuous at x equals zero. So we know we're discontinuous but we might be left or right continuous, okay? So what we say is we're right continuous, and the reason we say we're right continuous is because that's what this uh, definition says. The value of this limit is one. So what we would say here is the limit as x goes to zero from the right would be equal to one, but that's the same as f of zero. That function value is one, so is the limit. So this one would be left, uh, right continuous. It's not left continuous because there's that bubble there. So the value of this limit would be approaching some value that's not the same as the function. So if you got the solid dot coming from the right, you're continuous, but not from the left because the value of this limit is not the same as that function value, which is one. That's what that means. This one's the opposite situation. It would be left continuous because the value of this limit here is the same as the function value, which was negative one. So we're left continuous. We're not right continuous because the value of the limit is not the same as that function value. So that's how that gets. Okay, this one would be neither. The function value is zero. So what we have is f of zero is zero. The left-hand limit is not zero. The right-hand limit is not zero, so it's neither left or right continuous. So it goes like that. And then finally, the other possibility is you can be both left and right continuous if you just had like a line and they're both going to the same place, okay, with a solid dot, then you're left, left and right continuous. And if you're left and right continuous at a point, then you have to be continuous. That's the way that goes. Okay, so I'm going to just have you pause the video and look at this graph and fill this out and see if you kind of understand what I was talking about there. Check your answers as soon as you're done. Okay, so see what you got. Let's see if the teacher's right here. So at x equals 1, which is here, uh, yeah, you're right continuous. Okay, the value of the right-hand limit is 2. The value of the function is 2. Okay, at x equals 2, you're really here, and again, the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit are the same as the function value. That one's continuous. That's both left and right continuous. At x equals 3, uh, the idea is the right-hand limit is looks like it's about 5. Well, the function value is 1. The left-hand limit looks like it's maybe 2.5. That's not the same as the function value. So there's bubbles on both. And then finally, on x equals 5, which is here, this one's going to be left continuous because the value of that limit 
will be the same as the function value. There's a solid dot there. Okay, that's how that goes. All right, so that'll close that up, and uh, then I'll do produce one more short video to wrap this up.